think there is uh, some set set, and he will tell us about the speed gates uh, robots. Yes, so thank you for the invitation for this workshop. And I'm John Deshaies. I came with the history of Southeast Asian physics at the University of Tokyo. And today, in this talk, I will revisit the discrimination of this. And you can see the video from my recent paper. Okay, so before the talk, I'd like to thank these people, including my PhD supervisor, Shin Sidhu, and also Edward Olutan from IS. And I had an inspiring conversation from people from IP and U. Hitoshi Katsuya, and also Dr. Monto in the stream workshop this year. Okay, so isolation of digital knowledge is a fundamental constraint on considerable field theory, such as the STEM model, which is a kind of theory. So, for example, you want a kind of bench theory, it's the knowledge with the anomaly isolation condition to bring both the pure gauge. And the mix of the artificial anomalies is not satisfied. And these two types of anomalies involve these two kinds of triangular diamond diagrams. While anomalies of condition should are well understood, how the case of digital anomalies associated with discrete symmetries. In this case, there are only global or non perturbative anomalies, and one cannot use the usual method such as the protective fine diagram as I show to capture the name. In the paper by Cross and Wilczek in 1989, this paper is pre-gauge symmetry in continuous series. They also mention by identification of such discrete anomalies is a difficult but well developed art in the official. They didn't enter it there. So this is uh, is quite a demonstration for my current work. For example, how do we couple wire fermions consistently to a topological DNA gauge theory? In this case, we might be able to write down such a theory as the following local actions using this both the one form and two form UI gauge fields. Of course, there have been several attempts to tackle this problem, uh, such as the following works, and uh, Professor Saki is one of the kind of pioneers. Uh, working on along this line. So let me review some of these works. Uh, the work by Louis de Barnes and Graham Rose argue the VN anomaly cancellation condition basing on the UV U1 anomaly cancellation condition plus the charge constraint on mass with states surrounding spontaneous breaking of U1. So the result they obtained which is just a necessary condition for another three <coughs> centuries involving both the cubic and the linear terms of the charges at IR. So the right hand side of this anomaly formula comes from the contribution for, of Dirac and the Maura type masses. Okay, so however, soon after the work by Ibanez and the Rose, Tom Bax and the Thai, uh, get some comments on it. That is, only the linear constraint should be satisfied, while the nonlinear or cubic constraint might be too restricting and might not be required for consistency of the low interest field. That's because while the linear constraint can be understood in the knowledge theory just in terms of instantals, which can be a purely gravitational instantals or a gauge instantals, if the theory also uh, include some gauge, gauge centuries. While the nonlinear constraint is not solved from the knowledge considerations and would depend on the assumption about UV event theories, for example, normalization of the UI charts would in general affect the, this cubic constraint. Uh, also, the second Mora argued this uh, screen anomaly by to hope the not matching. So two types of discrete anomalies are involved. For type of anomaly, which is essentially the linear anomalies, the magic condition have, have to be always satisfied regardless of details of the mass bounds the spectrum. On the other hand, the type of two anomaly have to be also matched except if they are fractionally charged 
match on state. Okay, so as I mentioned, type of one anomaly is actually the means anomaly between Z and symmetry and then grab P, which is spin four symmetry group, space time symmetry of fermions. And the full analysis of these the four symmetry groups should correspond to both type one and type two analysis. So here is the question. Could we compute the full analysis without referring it to uh, re referring to any UV embedding theory with continuous symmetry such as U1? That is, could we determine discrete analysis from first principle? So here I study or re revisit discrete gauge analysis in 40 chiral fermion series from a more modern perspective based on the concept of symmetric protected topological spaces, uh, which is embedded in condensed matter community, <coughs> as well as the uh, refined definition of global analysis by Edward Witten recently. In particular, we keep a purely low end description of discrete gauge analysis a sketchy symmetry in many situations are emergent, such as this Z engagement can, can be described by this customer string. I focus on the simple case of this very inter symmetry outside people. That is a full symmetry group with this scheme for times Z N. And some of the discussion here has overlapped with the recent paper as shown here. So consider a set of left-handed wire fermions uh, with this symmetry transformation, and the anomalies can be computed as follows. We formulate the theory on a manifold and that will expose the spin structure and the thin structure. Then we compute the global anomalies by the type three, the so-called type three theory, which I will introduce later. So let n be a full manifold with both spin and the zn structures. Let M be a fine manifold with boundary M, such that the order structures on M extend over X. Then the type three theory gives a definition of the partition function of fermions in the representation R of Z and on X. So here is the partition function of fermion on the whole system. And the magnitude, while the magnitude <coughs> depends on only the boundary degrees of freedom, the phase depends on the whole, the, the whole system. It is, uh, here it is the eta variable zero operator on x. So in order to have pure equality theory, the partition function must not depend on how the theory extends in one inch higher. So in these two kind of extension, the ratio of their partition functions uh, by using this uh, surgery, this operation, uh, the ratio uh, is equal to the exponential eta in mirror on close the metaphor, which is a uh, union of this x and the minus x prime. So the anomaly free condition is given as this condition. Uh, the exponential a dimension e one for any closed manifold with a uh, spin time c and structure. Uh, actually, this factor is uh, inversible topological field partition function, or more precisely, a conversion invariant class of the five closed manifold. Uh, here the borders of conversion is uh, I, I will briefly introduce the idea of it. So x is bordered to y if the destroy of them is the boundary of a manifold in one dimension higher. Of course this can be more refined. X with some structure is bordered to y with some structure if they are the boundary of w is the same structure. So if x is bordered y, the a dimensions, the exponential a dimensions are also of length are also equal to each other. So any five manifolds together with whatever structure can be generated by a set of manifolds, which we call generators here, right? So uh, in this sense, in principle, we can compute the a dimensions for actually manifold. So by evaluating the exponential a dimer in generates x1 and s2, we found the anomaly can be represented by these two factors. And well, I will not discuss the detail of the computation, but if you are interested, you can see my paper. 
and not that the second term is just the mixed anomaly between Cn and Cp4. Therefore, the anomaly cancellation condition should be alpha equals zero for identity, which gives these two equations. In the presence, in the presence of both priorities, the cancellation condition becomes this one, but just uh, replace this this Cn charge uh, with left and the right from that and right contributions. Let's see some examples. For n equals 2, we have this a set of this equation, which means any representation of z2 symmetry is a non free. And n equals 3 equals 3, we have this constitution. And the non triple z3 a non free representation can be nine left handed y fermions or unit z3 charts. So on we have further example by just solve these equations. So the another free condition I derived based on die free theory has similar forms as the Ivanis Rose condition. That is only linear terms and cubic terms are involved. However, our results should be necessary or a sufficient condition for consistent gauge and Zn symmetry. While Ivanis Rose condition is in principle necessary condition. Or something like that. Uh, it's a necessary condition for a knife free theory that comes from a UV UI's uh, gauge symmetry that's spontaneous break to Zn and IR. So maybe it's a still interesting question if these, uh, these two uh, a knife free conditions are equal to each other. At least by some numer numerical check, I can show they are indeed. Identical. Okay, so uh, here is the last part of my talk. We know that the Ivanian Roche uh, conditions are subject to the issue of central extensions, which is also crucial in my situation. That is, discrete, discrete anomalies can in general change or even disappear when symmetries are extended. This is the essential difference between a non cancellation condition of a continuous interest and the one of a dispersed interest. While the former is independent of the normalization of U1 charge, the latter, the latter is sensitive to such extensions, for example, a lift from Zn to Zln for some integer n. For example, let's consider the following central extension from Z4 to Z8. Let's take a Z4 charge 1, 1, 2, which is anomalous by my formula. There's one half here, which is non trivial. Non -trivial. When this Z4 is extended to Z8, with the charge doubled, the anomaly is gone, that is, it's trivialized. So this means three left handed Y fermions with Z4 charge 1, 1, 2 cannot constantly come to a Z4 gauge field but can couple to a Z8 gauge field with zero scale Z8 charge 224. On the other hand, the linear anomaly, which is present for a single fermion with a unit Z4 charge, can never be trivialized upon any symmetry extension. So, a Zn symmetry with a non vanishing linear anomaly cannot be gauged. Statement. So, for any concept characteristic with a definite field symmetry group, the discrete charge on the mass is part must strictly satisfy the cancellation condition by both linear and cubic constraints. While only the effect symmetry on mass is this part is detected, the anomaly constraint <coughs> should only be respect up to symmetry extensions. In some situation, with the knowledge of the novice, we can predict the existence of mass particle, particles carrying fractional charges. Okay, so I leave the conclusion shown. Thank you very much. A quick question. So it wasn't completely clear. So you say that you can predict the existence of the fractional charge massive particles from your calculation? Yes, but this is essentially the same as you did before. Well, but I mean, we were not sure that there may or may not be.
but if I understood correctly, you say that you can calculate the anomalies from the effective theory, and then from there, can you then predict. say, predict something about yes. the mass expected? Yes. Thank you.